Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and we're going to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got uh, some pretty good stories about essentially what is going on with Congress and what they found out as far as their congressional hearings uh, and the five different pieces of information I think are pretty important for the crypto investor if you're worried about regulation. And also, we're going to take a look at uh, what is going on with Grayscale as they have added Cardano as their third largest hold in their large cap fund composition. And finally, we're going to finish it up with a little uh, update about what is going on with the World Mobile Token as that set is set to go live on uh, July 4th, July 5th, and what's happening with the token itself. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look at what is going on in the market. So today it is uh, July 2nd. It's about uh, high noon, El Paso, Texas time. And the market is boring. That's all I can really tell you. Uh, there's nothing really going up, nothing really going down. The total market cap is 1.38 trillion. We had touched 1.5 and now we're back again. And just like I said before, I don't believe that July is going to be fireworks and there's going to be an explosion and everything's going to be just, you know, go out and get knocked out of the park. This is the time when it's boring and nobody's interested in crypto except me and you. And uh, that is really what it comes down to. I, I think nothing's really going to happen until like August, September, when everything starts to kind of come into play. EIP 1559 is in play for Ethereum middle of July. So that's great. Smart contracts come on board for Cardano. So that is great. And there's a lot of different things that are happening in August, September, October. And uh, this July, I think, is just boring. And uh, that, to me, is exciting because this is the time, I personally believe, when all the money is made. Uh, this is what I did uh, back in the day when it was super boring. I just uh, dollar cost average around this time when no one was paying attention and uh, everything was just stagnant and I could just accumulate as things came in. And uh, that's what nobody does. And that's where I've made my most gains. So on this channel, this is not investment uh, advice. It's just investment opinion. And this is where everything is. Now, look at back in these days. Uh, remember in July 19th when Bitcoin was a, a whopping $3,400, somewhere around there, or even lower. Oh, those are great days. And uh, imagine when Cardano in that time was uh, three cents, and then uh, Chainlink was nothing. And uh, uh, I mean, everything was just, there was, it was just didn't really matter. And everybody, and Ethereum was like uh, 300 bucks, 200 bucks. So yeah, these are the times when I think it's, it's the best time to invest, but that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our first piece. So uh, this part here, I thought, I felt it was pretty, pretty interesting about what went on as far as the five things that came out of the congressional hearing. This just happened over a couple of days and uh, it was a well put together piece by Decrypt. And I'm, this is a great thing that, where we can just paraphrase and kind of chop down what happened. So here's the five things that I think uh, we all need to know about. So the first thing is that the crypto needs, crypto industry needs better regulation. This is the things I've been talking about for quite some time. And uh, I've been beating the drum and no one seems to, few people seem to believe me, but I still do think uh, we need cr clarity about what's going on. And I'm not the only one. So Tom Emmer, who's a big supporter of Bitcoin and crypto, says the exact same thing. He says, America may not get the full benefit from its crypto entrepreneurs if innovation is style stifled by lack of clarity. Uh, his concerns, Mr. Emmer, uh, were shared by many other reps and crypto experts. He called for a robust classification system for digital assets to determine whether cryptos are securities, commodities, or merit the same treatment as fiat, meaning is it going to actually be a currency like what El Salvador is doing with Bitcoin uh, right now? He states Bitcoin and blockchain, uh, they, are, they are actually better transparency and trust than traditional systems. And I, I like that part where he called it out and go, look, if you're looking for the most transparent financial system on the planet, blockchain has everything beat. We went round and round with the banks uh, back in 2008, and they didn't really uh, do too well for, for us. So uh, maybe we should give this one a try. So uh, shout out to, to Rep Tom Emmer for actually uh, pulling it down. And then the second part was, just like I said about 2008, uh, the 2008 financial crisis was on the lawmakers' minds when they were debating all these things. And a lot of this, this thing came out about 2008, 2008. And they were worried that the, uh, the states would need to prop up the crypto markets. And just as a quick refresher, um, this was the problem with the banks back then. They were giving junk loans to people who had no ability to pay these things back 
on junk assets. Uh, so they were, you know, did whatever a house was worth. They'd be like, ah, you know, whatever. Uh, we'll just, you know, do that. And then, of course, uh, junk bonds and all these different uh, uh, financial uh, provisions that they would uh, invest into, which were all just stacked on top of absolutely nothing. And the underlying asset was worthless. So if you take a look at that, there's a pretty good argument for what they're talking about with crypto because people are dumping a lot of money into crypto, uh, not as much as when we had 2.5 trillion market cap, but they still are dumping a lot into it. And they're getting into different assets that are worth absolutely nothing. And they're saying, well, this is a concern, but here's the thing. What's the difference between something like that and then getting into something like in the stock market, which really has, I mean, the business just folds. I mean, people just lose their money there as well. So when they're when they're concerned about it, I just kind of kind of have to take a step back and go. Remember, um, you know, there's only so much that that we can do as far as like you know, educate people and uh, to to move them forward. But in all honesty, I mean, <sighs> cryptocurrencies and digital assets, I still think are going to be one of the big driving forces moving forward. So if they're going to let them a lot of them do this this is where we should really get together and actually talk to people about doing their own research, finding out about the tokenomics, seeing which actual projects have utility and not just some kind of hype. And that's why I made Dan Teaches Crypto. The thing that's always circling above my head are actually uh, right down there, 100% free website. You can kind of learn about everything you want to know or most of what you want to know about crypto. So uh, there is that part itself. Now, moving on, uh, number three is that uh, this is a Democrat. Democrat Rep. Brad Sherman wants to shut Bitcoin down. You've probably seen a bunch of memes coming about uh, about this guy. And he's for California's 30th congressional district. And before you give me any thumbs down because you don't like uh, Democrats or you don't like Brad Sherman or whatever else, don't give me a thumbs down for that. Give me a thumbs down if the video is just awful and it sucks. Don't give me a thumbs down because of your political opinion. It has nothing to do with anything. So anyhow, Rep. Brad Sherman states uh, he would rather uh, people make bets in equity markets, sure, or the California lottery than invest in crypto. And I kind of see his point on the lottery thing because when you invest into, not invest, when you put your money in the lottery, it does go into like the taxes and things like that. So, I mean, sure, but <laughs> it's so stupid because I mean, that's just like, that's almost like a charity in all honesty. If you want to go into lotteries, uh, the chance of you making anything are pretty low. And the chances for that being uh, put into taxes is pretty high. And uh, let's see how the California works with that. I'm not here to debate. I have no care about that. But uh, lastly, he says he called for nothing less than to shut Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies down. But it is pretty interesting where he says, you know, you should go into equity markets, blah, blah, blah. So I was curious about Mr. Sherman and what, uh, where his uh, agendas lie. And this is Brad Sherman right there. There he is, Representative Sue California. Uh, OpenSecrets.org. And uh, here, for all his donors, uh, the most that donated to him were securities and investments, <laughs> insurance, 766. Now, let's take a look at uh, uh, who were those top contributors. Uh, Pro-Israel America PAC, great, okay. Uh, Capital Group Companies, all right. Uh, Blackstone Group, BlackRock Inc., and American Institute of CPAs. And you notice that the total isn't that much, uh, but um, it is what it is. So uh, take that as you will, and uh, maybe there's a, a agenda for there because, you know, look, if uh, someone's paying, paying your lunch, it's kind of hard to kind of go against them and uh, just say, yeah, you know, we should go into cryptocurrencies, but uh, I'll let you be the judge of that. And let's move on to number four. Number four, uh, most members of Congress are keen to gain more understanding of crypto. And I thought this was a, a bright point. Uh, unlike Rep. Sherman, the majority of the members of Congress were eager to find out more about crypto. That's great uh, because, look, uh, a lot of them don't know anything about them. They just know there's this thing called Bitcoin and they probably heard about Dogecoin and maybe Ethereum. That's about it. That's all they know. They have no idea what it is. So it's good that they actually, uh, you know, are like taking a key interest. Uh, Van Valkenburg was keen to enlighten them, emphasizing the technology's transparent and peer-to-peer -peer nature and its resistance to censorship and sustainability compared to the traditional finance system. Uh, the latter, as far as the traditional system, he said, uses an estimated five times more energy than Bitcoin. Let me t say it again. The traditional finance system uses five times more energy than Bitcoin. Just food for thought. In case someone says, eh, Bitcoin's sucking up all the energy. 
And uh, then you can come back and say, well, you know, we are using a lot of uh, uh, renewables, especially here in Texas, using about a third of uh, wind and solar, but uh, that's another argument. And then lastly, and this was the best, this was the best, fiat's potential for money laundering puts crypto in the shade, meaning that uh, fiat or cash is what everybody is using for money laundering. Rep Representative Anthony Gonzalez was keen to highlight a little sided figure in the debate about crypto and AML. And he says, uh, I would ask compared to what? Compared to fiat where 99% of money laundering goes unprosecuted as opposed to cryptocurrency. He states, it's an argument that many advocates of crypto and even legacy banking institutions have made. A September 2020 report by the Society for, Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications or SWIFT, as a, that's an awful uh, acronym, noted that the number of identified cases of money laundering using crypto remain relatively small compared to the volumes of cash laundered through traditional methods. I'm sorry, uh, Gonzalez did not say that. That was just a little piece there. And of course, it's not likely to silence regulators. So uh, that's great that Rep. Gonzalez uh, said that. He said, look, 99% of money laundering is still fiat. So because of that, uh, I have to give uh, Mr. Anthony Gonzalez a follow here on Twitter. I will link his uh, Twitter handle and uh, sound like he's on the right track. So all in all, uh, to be honest with you, I think it was pretty good about uh, what came out of there. I'm sure there's going to be some negative. Look, you can have 99% positive stuff come out of, a, of anything, of any story, of any hearing, and then the 1% gets amplified to the moon. That's why I like to talk about the positives here, about what's going on in crypto, and just move forward. So let me know what you think in the comment section. I see this as a, as a win for us, as a, things have been put out, especially the whole thing about people actually wanting to learn more about crypto, and there'll be an ongoing debate. Let's move on to our next piece. So this one, I like this one. Uh, Grayscale and Cardano. Uh, I digress. Let me, uh, let me come back here. This was a nice little uh, uh, tweet that I retweeted out, and this was uh, today. And they state from Grayscale, right from them, we adjusted the portfolio of Grayscale Digital Large Cap Fund by selling certain amounts of the existing fund components and we now have Cardano. This table shows the fund's weightings as of today, July 2nd, 2021. So Chainlink, 0.86, watch out. Uh, Litecoin, 0.99%, all right. Bitcoin Cash, 1%, eh. Cardano, 4%, pretty good. They must have been bought a lot of it. And, uh, but it is still pales in comparison to Bitcoin and Ethereum. But look, it is something and uh, it's good for them to put these things in the mix. Now, I just will tell you, I am super biased because I have Cardano. Also, I have a Cardano staking pool, which if you go to danteachescrypto.com, right up there, uh, just click on ADA to staking, nice little video. It explains what staking is, how to stake, and how DNews compares to all the different stake pools out there. So uh, I was pretty happy to see this, and I was kind of surprised that it was uh, you know one of six. Uh, they're pretty... Uh, a pretty conservative in actually what they get into. So they must see some type of future. And just to uh, verify, Grayscale Digital Large Cap Fund announces quarterly rebalancing. And I'll let you read this. And just to paraphrase, they said that um, for them to actually put money into another type of uh, large cap, they actually get rid of something and they move things around. That's what they did with Chainlink before. And they said, we're excited to announce or to welcome Cardano to our digital large cap funds portfolio as we work to ensure that our diversified funds can safely hold assets that collectively compromise 70% of the entire digital asset market. This was Edward McGee, VP of finance. So look, I mean, you know, Cardano is in the top five. So it'll slip, it'll be between five and seven, depending on the day. Uh, uh, that's just how it goes. But it's good to see that they've put Cardano in there. Cardano has uh, a pretty, it's, it's gaining momentum, we'll say. But uh, again, and people will say this all the time, but Rob, what does it do? What does it do? What does Cardano do? Well, right now, not much. That's, that's, the, that's the truth. And uh, we won't see the full potential until smart contracts roll in in August. And uh, that leads me to my last point where we're going to talk about uh, World Mobile Token. And just so you know, uh, again, I'm an advisor to this one. I advise this, this uh, project, but I've talked about it at length. When we talk about real-world utility, this is the one that actually does things. 
Uh, they've already uh, gone into Tanzania. They've already put in a smart village, essentially, where they put in um, uh, solar panels and also pods to uh, give telecommunications internet service. And uh, I'm going to, the video itself uh, is over on Dan Clips and we interviewed the CEO. But uh, this one is, I had a talk uh, with uh, one of my contacts there at World Mobile, Cedric, and uh, we're going to talk at length. We talked uh, about two minutes or so, and that video will, uh, will air tomorrow on Dan Clips. And what he talks about is just the, uh, what's going on with uh, the vault, creating the vault, uh, which will actually get you in there, and you can get into the uh, pre-sale and everything else. Unfortunately, if you're in America, like myself, if I click on Create Vault, it's going to tell me, tough because you're not you're in the states and that's just how it is so if you're in the states sorry um but we do me and cedric do talk about secondary markets and when all this thing will happen but it's uh going to happen on uh, july 4th and uh there's a certain time frame so you have to create your vault and then you have to get in at a certain point and that's the big thing so um wait for that for tomorrow and we'll talk to cedric and that is it for today so look uh <sighs> exciting times exciting times on what is going on for <laughs> the market and when i say exciting times i'm just kidding it's super boring but these are the times when the investor of me just comes out and says this is the boring times no one's paying attention to these projects they're just letting them sit and no one really cares but the projects themselves are the ones that are making all the headway they're forming partnerships they are strengthening their base. They are working for acquisitions and marketing, all those things later on. So again, I still think that this is the best time. And uh, when, when the market explodes and goes up like a hockey stick, that's when you'll see everybody else in, uh, in YouTube land and Twitter and TikTok talk about how great cryptocurrency is. I talk about it right now. And then when the thing just takes off, that's when I don't really do too much. And I just talk about, hey, market's taken off, great. but. Uh, not good for me because I've already done all my purchases before. And that's it for today. So look, thanks for sticking with me to the very end. I appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and a like. Uh, it goes a long way. And uh, if you like these types of videos for daily news, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we only do daily news here on Digital Asset News. Over on Dan Clips, we talk about more advancements and different projects. You can follow us over there. Link is in the description. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for coming by. I appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.